if real life had a soundtrack. I reckon this would be perfect for this morning. The sun has just come up over the horizon. Not a breath of wind. Everything is golden and beautiful. This is day number three exploring the Victorian high country, located in far northern Victoria. Our mountaintop camping spot is a place called Howard's Hut, 1,850 metres above sea level. It's the middle of summer and the weather is perfect. I'm the first one to wake up, and the light is absolutely amazing. To me, Australia's national colours of green and gold are represented perfectly here as the colours of the Australian bush. Soon, it's time to wake up, make breakfast, pack up camp and hit the road. And this is the reward for getting up early. You can see behind me, down in the valley, you can see the clouds. So we are actually above the clouds. This is how high we are. That's quite amazing. I really love this place. In this series, I'm going to be exploring a small part of this amazing countryside. For the first half of the trip, I'm travelling with some mates. And in the second half, I'm heading off by myself. The Vic High Country is a four-wheel driver's paradise. It has tracks to suit all types of abilities from easy to difficult. It has river crossings. It has forests and mountains. And we're going to experience it in all sorts of weather conditions. I get a chance to rescue fellow travelers and settle the age old question of does my car sink or float? Well, we are just leaving Howard's Hut campground. And this was a beautiful campsite. We had a lovely campsite last night. We had a lo lovely campfire last night, sorry. And uh, we sat around, had a couple of bottles of wine, had a nice chat, it was really, really pleasant. And then 
the thunder and lightning came. And luckily it didn't rain, but we were just sitting there watching the thunder and lightning roll over the mountain tops, getting closer and closer. And at one point it was right above us and then it passed us by and we didn't have any rain. And it actually didn't get very cold at all last night, so it was really, really pleasant. Woke up this morning to a beautiful sunrise. Got ourselves ready for the day and now we are heading off to a place called Craig's Hut. Now, if anyone has seen the movie The Man from Snowy River, this is where it was filmed. And I'm personally looking very much forward to seeing this in real life and then when I go home I'm going to watch the movie but uh, yeah today is going to be quite interesting I think so the first order of the day is to find a service station so we can fill up with fuel one of the good things about the Vic High Country is even though it feels remote you are never more than a few hours drive from a town this is quite spectacular it seems to be, well, the only way I can explain it is if somebody poured a whole bunch of rocks into the valley. Gold was discovered in the Victorian Alps in 1852. This brought thousands of people to the area, and you can still see remnants of logging and mining activity today. But this looks quite fresh. I would say that this was done to stabilise the mountainside and prevent landslides. And that continues on on the other side of the track, further down into the valley. We're driving across the valley floor and we've come across the first of many picturesque water crossings. First up, it's the troopies' turn to bounce across the rocks. And then it's my turn. It is an absolutely beautiful day and I'm really, really enjoying the drive in this amazing valley. It's river crossing after river crossing. I'll be stealing one of those, one for me and the missus. Surroundings like this, it is so easy to get completely absorbed in just driving. The track is easy, the weather's perfect, crisscrossing rivers all day, ducking in and out of the shadows. It is just a perfect way to spend the day.
Now that is an amazing view. Okay, just walking out the steps to Craig's hut. Wow. So my first sight of it, it looks exactly like in the movie. Well, this is where the man from Snowy River was filmed. This is Craig's hut. Now, apparently it's burnt down several times and it's been rebuilt. They've got all their plans, so they just rebuild it each time. And from what I can remember, it looks pretty much like the movie. It's an amazing place. And how is that for a view? Well, the suspension squeak is back with a vengeance. Strange thing is it goes away sometimes for half an hour or so, especially after river crossings, and then it's back. We've had a good look at it and there doesn't appear to be anything broken. So we're just going to continue on with the trip as if there's nothing wrong. We're heading to a place called Lake Cobbler. Our navigator Paul has decided to take one of his special shortcuts. We are at 1800 meters above sea level. We're skirting along the mountain ridges and these old, silvery, twisted, ancient trees give me the creeps. Imagine driving through here at night. We're still at about 1600 meters and there's a sheer drop off to my right. I reckon if, uh, if I accidentally drove off the edge, I would probably have time to do my taxes before I hit the bottom. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Inevitably, we've come across some oncoming traffic we have to squeeze past. The whole point of these trips is to get away from the hustle and bustle of big city life. But sometimes peak hour traffic is just unavoidable, even out here.
It's late afternoon and we've been making good progress. The track has been full of hairpin bends, just like the one coming up ahead. A little bit of rock hut here on the inside of this hairpin. We're getting closer to our destination of Lake Cobbler. Just behind me, we've got some indigenous rock art. And this is uh, quite common around these parts. And it was done by some authentic indigenous Australians that came to this country on a boat or a plane, maybe about 150 years ago. The track winds on and on. The closer we get to Lake Cobbler, the rougher the track becomes. Well, we are just heading down this really, really there's no other word for it. Gnarly track. Oh my god, the ruts are massive. And you can see in front of me the Troopy and the 200 series. Uh, the middle's alright, not too hard, honey. Oh, yes, okay, <laughs> I bottomed out. There's a stump on the right, we'll give us grief. Watch your sidewalls on this one on here. Uh, we've got some spectators here. These guys are actually hiking through the place. It is an incredibly rough and desolate and remote place to be on foot. Hey guys, good, ignore the squeaks. <laughs> oh, this is a very, very rough country. Lots of rocks, lots of ruts, lots of mud, lots of dust. Feels very remote. I'm trying to choose the uh, smoothest line. It's not always successful. <laughs> that really rough track we've finally arrived at Lake Cobbler. I can see a little bit through the trees here and I can see a nice camping area on the other side of the lake. You can uh, bolt it and bounce through the middle or swing, swing hard to the right. <laughs> this is the last obstacle between us and our camping spot. I think we're all tired and we just want to get there.
We've got a little bit of a river crossing to get to the other side of the lake. The easiest way to get through this is to go around the right hand side. It seems to be a lot shallower, less rocky. It looks like a very easy crossing. And so I nurse my poor squeaky battered car across the river and we finally arrived at our destination. Finally we've made it. Lake Coppola. Well, this is Lake Cobbler and it's absolutely beautiful. This is uh, very unexpected in all this rugged, dry, dusty, rocky country. Uh, suddenly a beautiful lake with reeds around it and uh, it's very picturesque and looks very, very beautiful. We're going to camp here for the night, try and fix my suspension and then uh, probably part ways in the morning and I'm going to continue on my own for a couple of days and see what I can see. Thank you so very much for watching. Stay tuned for part four coming soon.